much. Um, today, I'm going to um, turn the program over to our board member, Mr. Chris Hunt. He is going to introduce our speaker. Mr. Hunt is in charge of programming this year, and he has done a fine job with that. We're happy to have Sheriff Thompson with us today. And uh, among the other accolades that I will recite, he follows instructions because I talked to him two weeks ago and said I needed a biography, and I have one on his letterhead that he delivered today. Good, good of you to remember. Uh, Sheriff Thompson's been in law enforcement since 1987. He and his wife Kay have three daughters, Lexi, Lindsay, and Brittany, and two sons, Matt and J.D. They also have three grandchildren, Jade, Bode? Bodie. Bodie, okay. And Molly Kay. Uh, he served in capacities as patrol officer, patrol sergeant, detective sergeant, <laughs> detective lieutenant, <coughs> chief of detectives, and the assistant chief at the Owensboro Police Department. He's also had extensive experience in nar narcotics investigations, both in an undercover capacity and as a case investigator. He's a graduate of both the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, and the Criminal Justice Executive Development Program in Richmond, Kentucky. He's completed numerous schools and seminars across the nation in various topics related to the criminal justice profession. He's also a member of the National Sheriff's Association, where he's been appointed to the National Drug Enforcement Committee. And he currently serves as the Dow <coughs> County Sheriff, and we welcome Sheriff David Thompson. Thank you for those kind words, but I'll probably. <laughs> I can say this, uh, I have been in law enforcement a long time, I was a member of the, uh, uh, one of the best uh, police departments in the state of Kentucky, I really mean that, uh, the Owensboro Police Department, but I can tell you in the past two years as being sheriff of, of Ohio County has been some of the proudest uh, um, times that I had in law enforcement. I've never been happier and uh, sure I'm blessed, my family's blessed to be here. Lucky, lucky to be the sheriff here. I uh, really didn't know what to talk about today. Uh, this is my first opportunity to be able to speak to the business uh, community here, so I really do appreciate you having me here. It's been a, a, a quick two years. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's been two years, but it has. And um, I guess when we, when we was talking back there, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is what your sheriff office is trying to do for the community and and help our businesses to be better and, and, and uh, help our, our family members and our community members here to have a better quality of life. And for me to do that, there's some things that I had to do to get in place and build an infrastructure there at the sheriff office to make things happen, which is a, a process that continues. But we'll go into some of that. Uh, first off, I guess I, uh, I need to say that I'm a very informal speaker, uh, so if anybody has any questions at any time, uh, feel free to, to shout it out. I also want to tell you, too, that uh, I'm kind of a straightforward guy. Uh, I'll apologize up front if I, if I offend anyone, uh, but I'm a straight shooter, <laughs> kind of, that's what I want to say, and uh, I don't hold anything back. A lot of time it gets me in trouble, right, Kay? And, uh, uh, but uh, I do apologize up front, but you, you elected me to be your sheriff. You elected me to do a job, and that's what I'm going to do until you unelect me. So uh, with that being said, I, I need to go into why I wanted to be the sheriff of Ohio County. And uh, believe it or not, I know a lot of people don't believe it, but I've actually lived here over 20 years in Ohio County. Not two years or three years like it's been, been noted. Uh, my wife has lived here over 30-something years. Uh, I was fortunate, met her, and, and fell in love, and, and moved to Ohio County, Kentucky, and loved every minute of it. So. Uh, we have raised our children here, we've raised our grandchildren here, and we just got a brand new grandchild to raise them here. So it's very important to me to do my part, what I know that I can do, which isn't a whole lot, but being in law enforcement, uh, I felt like what I could add to help would be uh, to run for sheriff of Ohio County. Now, before I did that, I spoke with uh, our previous sheriff, uh, Ellis Doolin, who is a very dear friend of mine. Uh, we talk on several occasions. We even take family vacations together. So this was nothing personal between the previous sheriff and, and, and uh, myself and, and what we do here. Very good person. 
But uh, I do believe that uh, there are some quality of life issues that, uh, that we can touch and that we can make better with uh, uh, me being sheriff of Ohio County. I also wanted to add a, uh, uh, some more professional law enforcement to our community. I'll, I'm here to say that we have some very fine law enforcement here. We also have the Kentucky State Police. We have the Beaver Dam Police Department, who is uh, uh, very well in the Harvard Police Department. And then, of course, the Ohio County Sheriff's Office. But where I, where I would go from state to state, uh, be up in Frankfurt, be up at Richmond, when, it, when someone spoke about Ohio County, uh, it was a joke. It was a laughing joke. And I always heard that Paul Harvey said on the radio that, you know, anywhere, uh, if you want to commit a murder, you commit it in Ohio County. But, well, you know what? Being in the profession I'm in, that aggravated me and it ticked me. Well, I wanted to change that. So uh, uh, that was part of the reason that I wanted to come here also. I also wanted to change the ideology and the culture and the way law business is done here. Uh, there's a perception, and you, you guys, uh, might see it, might know. There's a perception that things are done under the table here. Things are done different than anywhere else in the state of Kentucky. And I can tell you, a lot of that is perception. Okay, I've been here two years, and, and uh, most of it's run, run, run across the board. And, but I'll tell you what we don't do. We do not, uh, we play by the book. We play by the rules. We treat everybody fair, and we treat, treat everybody equal. Uh, that's very important to us, and that's what we do here. And uh, I think we are changing the way things are getting done and the way things are being done here. And then, then we, we wanted to form a partnership with the community because I, I certainly believe that, that uh, the issues, the drug problems, the child abuse, the domestic issues and stuff like that is not just a sheriff or a, a police department's problem. It's a community problem. And the only way that we're going to solve those problems is to work together. Uh, as a community. So it's very important to form those partnerships and, and to have uh, transparency throughout our agency to where the community members believe in us and believe in what we're doing and, and number one, trust us. So what have we done so far? Uh, well, I can tell you, it took, we've been in this two years and it took the first year, it, it took me that long to build a staff. I had to, uh, uh, I'm very picky of the people that I allow to work uh, at the sheriff's office because this is a, a, a major, uh, major, a lot of authority that these folks hold. They can take you to jail. They can, they can uh, uh, detain you. They can take your property. They can kill you legally. So it's very important that I hire the, the, the most trained professional type of people that I can to take those uh, responsibilities serious and that when they do go out to deal with you and they do go out to deal with our community uh, that we don't have to worry about them violating constitutional rights or, or uh, uh, any of those things that I mentioned before. So it took me 12 months to do that and uh, I'm, where I'm allowed, uh, the people I have, we are full staff at this point and uh, uh, we have some very, very caring, wonderful people. Upon doing that, once you get those people in there, you know, I, uh, I would like to say that I raised the pay of these people. When I got here, these folks were making like $10, $10.50 an hour. I actually did not raise their pay. They are now making a, a, uh, um, more money than what they were, but what they were getting, they was getting around $260,000 worth of monies in uh, mileage checks. Now. Some of them may have drawn those miles, and some of them may have not. I don't know. I'm not here to argue that. But I was here to, to say that there's a better way of doing business to where the money that they make now, I can actually show what they're doing for. And I can be accountable when the IRS comes to me and says, where's this money going to? Then it's going to salaries and not just balance checks and, and uh, that type of thing. So we were able to appropriate some of that money in the budget. It's the same budget that... Believe it or not, the same budget that the sheriff's office has worked with for the last 12 to 13 years, not one cent has changed. So we was able to do that and get these people uh, some, some better pay. So we were able to get a fleet. We were able to work with the fiscal court and get a fleet of, of new cars that we could all be proud of, that the community could be proud of. Uh, what we had were these deputies were having to buy their own vehicles, so 
You know, when you're only making $10.50, $10.50 an hour, and you have to go buy your own vehicle, you can imagine the type of vehicles that these folks were having to buy, and then not keeping them maintained and that such. I cannot tell you, this is the honest God's truth, I cannot tell you how many times before we got this fleet that we actually had to call a wrecker to come to the scene to tow our police car off from the scene. And then on top of that, it was costing us two to three hundred thousand dollars a year just to maintain those same vehicles. So we had to do something. So fortunately, a uh, fiscal court uh, saw the need and we were able to take uh, uh, some uh, co severance money and do some of that stuff now. Now we have it in place to where that will never happen again. These cars will be replaced two or three at a time uh, every budget. The tax office, when we got to the tax office, uh, uh, we added, uh, uh, we, we've actually added computers to the sheriff's office and email. Uh, I know that's hard to believe, uh, but uh, we actually put in email. And we can now email people, and um, we were writing out million dollar checks. The, we, we, uh, the way I run the sheriff's office is a business, just like you run here. It's a $9 million business. That's how much money comes through there. And when I seen that we were writing, handwriting, million dollar some odd checks out to the school board or wherever this money goes to, I just, I, it's just really hard for me to believe. So uh, now we got some software that we can actually print out checks and we're not handwriting million dollar checks. We also put in some software to where we have barcodes and such for the tax office. So when you come to pay your property tax, instead of having to go through, you know, 350 books, to find your tax bill, you can barcode it, it comes up on a computer, and within five minutes you're out the door. It's paid and it's out the door. So uh, some of those things we're pretty proud of. And by doing that, we were able to eliminate a position in the tax office. So we can run that office a whole lot more efficient than what it was being run just by adding that software packages there. With the patrol division, uh, hiring those people was very important to keep them trained. Uh, before uh, we come, that uh, our folks uh, never had any firearms training. Very important to, have to our people be able to use those weapons efficiently when we go out to these scenes. And uh, so we even have, uh, I have two trained firearms instructors on staff now uh, that do that. And we also send them to driving training since this is what we do. Uh, that's what they do when they come to work. They get in their cars and they drive. Uh, they also get driving training. So we we're very important, uh, it's very important to me when we go to deduct something in our budget, our training actually, our cost actually goes up. So training is very important to me. Uh, education is very important to me. What we've started at the sheriff's office, I got two new hires, and when I hired them, and there's a reason behind that, and I can talk my full 20 minutes on this, but uh, when I hired them, I, I made a deal with them that they have to get their bachelor's degree. And these folks that I've hired are already enrolled in the colleges. And I, I refuse to bring them into the office and hire them and give them the opportunity if they were going to drop out of the college. So what I did, I told them I will hire you, but you have to promise me that you will stay in, you'll stay in college and you'll get your bachelor's degree. That's what I do because as a sheriff, I'm only guaranteed four years. So what I can give them is give them and make them get their education to where if a new sheriff comes in and gets rid of those folks, they can be competitive when they go looking for jobs elsewhere in other departments. If they don't have that degree, the way things are now in law enforcement, they'll never get a job anywhere else. So that's something I can do for them. So uh, that's what we've done with our hiring now. And uh, uh, and they both know that if they ever, when they drop out, and they're close to getting their bachelor's, both of them, but once they drop out, they're fired. <laughs> uh, evidence, we had to come in, we had to build an evidence vault. Uh, we, um, we actually redone the whole evidence process. There was, there was a place to keep uh, evidence, but we now have a chain of evidence to where we can go to court and actually defend it and win cases. Uh, and, and that means everything is documented when that person uh, comes in and that deputy gets that uh, evidence, whether it be marijuana, whether it be farms, or whatever, it's documented, documented where it comes from, where it's going, and where it's been. And that way when we go to court, uh, we don't have egg on our face and lose a case because of uh, evidence not done right. That's very important too. We've added a state-of-the-art interview room. 
Uh, when I got there, there was no place to, to uh, take a suspect and interview. And uh, as some attorneys in here will know how important it is, if we're able to get an audio, video confession from a person, well then uh, it's a lot harder for them to do their jobs. It's a lot easier for us to do ours. So we have a, a state-of-the-art interview room that not only that we use, but uh, Beaver Dam, Hartford, and State Police, and anybody else, a lot of federal agencies, they come down and they use it also. We're very proud of that. We have a canine program here at the Sheriff's Office. We have two canines, uh, and we've actually got the national recognition, uh, national awards with our canine program. There are a lot of times we'll go out uh, combating the drugs in our community, and without our noses, we don't smell like a dog does. And without our dogs, there are several cases that we've made that we wouldn't be able to make without them. So we're very proud to have that uh, uh, canine unit. We have an accident reconstruction unit. I can't tell you how important that is. And, and it, the, the case that we're dealing with right now, uh, that uh, the, the two individuals uh, ended up chased by one of the fathers, ended up in a pond, uh, drowning. Uh, they both died over the weekend. And uh, it was part of the uh, accident reconstruction units going out there reconstructing this accident to give us evidence to show that uh, along with our witnesses and along with the 911 tapes and stuff that we have to show that, that we were on the right track to charging this man with murder two counts. So uh, we're very proud to have that, uh, that uh, unit. A lot of departments don't have that. We do here. We have a, uh, a DRE uh, deputy, drug recognition expert. There's only, I'm thinking somewhere between 250, 300 of these in the whole United States. Uh, he went through his training. We have one of those now at Ohio County Sheriff's Office. We also took in the 911 communications. Before it was run by a 911 board. And it was hard to um, hold people accountable. And it was hard to manage budgets and such with that 911 board. There was a lot of politics involved in that 911 board. By me taking that uh, 911 uh, communications into the sheriff's office, all the politics have left. Before we took over the 911, uh, the, the budget on that, their overtime budget, was almost 300% over their overtime budget. We, we practically eliminated, eliminated the uh, overtime with the way we do the uh, scheduling now and the hiring processes. So we're pretty proud of that too. Uh, we also uh, took in our SROs. At the high school, even though they were there, it was hard for us as the, as the sheriff and the sheriff office to get into the schools when they were running their own program. So we uh, partnered with the school system, and we now have uh, sheriff deputies as SROs in the school system, and, and we got some programs going on, and we got a Humvee that's being painted up for them, and, and uh, that type of thing. So we're pretty proud of that. So I, I can, uh, it, you know, there's a whole lot more of that that I could go into, but those are some of the highlights that, that, that we've done and it's been a busy two years, as you can see. Where are we going? What, what do we have on the horizon? Well, right now we're working on securing the uh, courthouse. Uh, this is one of the courthouse and sheriff offices in the state of Kentucky, the only one that I know of that's not secure. And there's a lot of reasons for that not to be secure. Not because I want to be uh, behind secure doors where no one can reach me. But there's a lot of families, a lot of people we deal with, there's a lot of uh, domestic issues, there's a lot of children and juveniles we bring in there, and do I want them to be with, and actually it's law, uh, they need to be separated from some of these bad guys. We've had some serious, serious bad people in this place. And then also there's just the fact that people are just coming in and out of there while we're trying to do business, and there's guns, and there's drugs, and there's bad people. Just today, just today, believe it or not, one of our community members in Ohio County come down to the courthouse right outside my office and took a dump in the middle of the floor. I'm going to secure that. Not for me, but for every citizen in this county that deserves some privacy and professionalism when they come into that courthouse. So that's what we've got there. I'm going to secure the courthouse. You guys know when you go to the courthouse, everything is upstairs, and you got a little metal detector that you go through. Well, anybody wanting to do harm to that courthouse can just walk through the front door and the bottom floor 
and they can do anything they want, and they can go anywhere they want to go. We got to, we got to, uh, a stand there that you can go through, but you can come through this the back door up the steps. So we're going to secure that. It's my job to sheriff to make sure you're secure. If you're in there doing public business and you're in court, it's my job to keep you safe. So we're going to secure that. We're going to have a juvenile diversion program. We're working with the schools, and we're going to take at-risk kids, and we're going to send them to an eight-week program. Well, we're going to sit down, or once a week we sit down with them and we talk about manners and, and laws and, and some of the problems and issues that they have. And then once they, they um, complete this and they graduate from this course, then we take them to a, a professional ball game or we take them wet water rafting or, or uh, we take them to do some of that. Some of these things that these adverse kids will probably never get to do in their childhood that we're going to, uh, to do that. So very proud of that program. Uh, we're going to start using videos in, in the courts. It's set up. The, the, the systems are there. While we're not using that, I don't know. But I can't tell you how many tax dollars and how much money and manpower we go to different places, train, get, picking people up at other courthouses, bringing them to court, <coughs> them seeing court, and us having them taken back. Thousands, thousands of dollars. And uh, so we're meeting with the judges, and it looks like we're going to start doing video conferences where we're doing less transportations just to make the office more efficient and, and more efficient way of spending our tax dollar. And then uh, would like eventually, because of the, the calls and such we, we're getting, I'd like to expand our agency. I need more personnel. I got one person that's dedicated to working drugs here, and I have put him with the uh, uh, task force, but, uh, you know, I could use another person here. Uh, I could use a juvenile officer. So they're, you know, so we're going to be expanding that. I know all that takes money, but I can show and I can document the reasons for, uh, for doing this type of thing, every bit of it. So, uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to become, and I tell you, it's very important to become a full service sheriff office because when I can incorporate all this stuff, what this does for us, what it does for our community, this helps us. Uh, with our crime rate, with our drug rate and such, and, and when businesses come in here to locate, that's one of the questions, a couple of the questions that they have for us is, number one, what's our crime rate? And one of the other questions is, do we have the population that can pass a drug test that we can put in these factories and such? So, uh, so it's important that I have the infrastructure and I have the type of office and professional caring people that we have to go out and attack some of these issues. So when they do come, we can answer, yes, we do have the pipeline to do that. And our crime rate is fairly low. We got crime like everybody else. We're not going to get rid of crime, but we, we, uh, we do a pretty good job deterring a lot of it. And then when we do catch them, we actually get a lot of property back, believe it or not. So uh, it's very important uh, to do that. And, and I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to leave the last thing I'm going to say, unless you have any questions, is, is we have a mission statement at the uh, at the sheriff's office, and it's not one that I wrote, and it's not one that my major wrote. It's one that we staff these. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to wait on you? <laughs> it, it's, it's not one that I wrote. It's that when we got our staff together, we tasked them with this. We want it to be their mission. We wanted it something they believed in, something they cared about, and they wrote this mission statement. And uh, uh, I would like to read that to you. The mission of the Ohio County Sheriff Office is to work in partnership with the community to protect and preserve life and property, solve community problems, provide services to enhance the quality of life, and reduce the fear and impact of crime it has on citizens in our county. We recognize and accept our duty to safeguard lives and property, protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against the violence and disorder, and will strive always to respect the constitutional rights of all people to liberty, equality, and justice. That's wrote by the deputies that serve you here. So, I thank you for letting me come here. Do y'all have any questions? Hope I didn't bore you too much. Yes, ma'am. Um, I kind of have a question. You talked a lot about doing, uh, getting the community involved to help you guys with the sheriff's office. Great, because I agree that you guys can't do it all on your own. Can you give some examples of what you're talking about, like with getting the community involved? Well, I can tell you, before I even start here, all camp. You know, they leave these uh, um, cards around that a lot of people fill out and they send to us to where we, we can uh, look at drug activity and that type of stuff. That stuff is always good. We partnered with the school, uh, as I stated. 
about uh, having our SROs in the schools, but also on this drug, uh, juvenile diversion program. We will partner with the schools in that. We, uh, uh, as far as the county in general, we're going to be working on a citizens uh, academy, which is done in, in a lot of agencies, uh, but uh, I don't think one's ever been done at the Ohio County, Ohio County Sheriff's Office. And when we do that, when people come in, they see that we are transparent, that we are trying to make a difference, well then, we have to build trust. And, and that trust comes when people start calling us. There are eyes and ears out there. When people start calling us and telling them that this one down the road is, is making meth, or this one down the road is beating their children, that's where it comes in when we're working this partnership. And I can tell you it's working. When I got here, our dispatch was taking in about 6,000 calls a year. Okay, that, that services where they actually needed the police officer to come out and, and talk to these people, meet with people. To this date, we are at almost 13,000 calls. Two years. Two years. We've grown to 13,000 calls to this date. We're not even done yet. So people are trusting us. People are realizing that we're, we, we mean what we say. Uh, we, are, we do care. And, and we're solving some problems. And we're taking care of some business, and uh, uh, and we're solving our crimes. So uh, uh, that's the best way that we can work with the most. But I tell you what, we take suggestions. If anybody has any suggestions, we'll take them. And and not kind of out of the box type of guy, uh, we'll, we'll work with anything. That number that was from the first of this year, though. That's less than a year, right? That's correct. That was the starting of that was. A, I actually, believe it or not, it's really not the starting of, uh, since January because we put in a new 911 system. It's actually the first five months of this year, uh, believe it or not, we're not even counting. So since May, May or June, we're already up to 12,000 calls, which, which is what we want. That's why we're there. And that, that in itself shows that what we're doing is working. I'd like to believe that is. That's a good point. And your name? <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, recently, the uh, uh, law that was passed in regard to the selling of uh, scrap metals, uh, is the Sheriff's Department involved in uh, enforcement of that? Or are you seeing any results of it? It's kind of a Absolutely. Uh, believe it or not, we were being pounded, pounded with calls and cases of, of people going out and selling this uh, scrap metal and such. And uh, it was one of our detectives uh, that, that worked with us that uh, also worked, uh, he retired from, well, he worked for Keith Kane Davis County Sheriff Office and, and uh, uh, decided to come to the other side. And uh, he had been working with pawn shops and, and a lot of these places. So uh, we're in the process of actually getting to where they have to show ID, they have to have signature, and it's state law now too. Uh, we were involved with that. The sheriff, uh, the national and the Kentucky Sheriff Association, along with the uh, Kentucky uh, Association of Chief Police, were involved in that stuff. But uh, locally here, we went to each and every one of them. We now get a, a return. If anybody that comes in there and selling their property, uh, selling their stuff, uh, we get a list of the people that do that. So. And with that being said, it has slowed down. The, the number of thefts that we get as far as that is, is, is not at all like it was prior. That's because of state legislation also. Any other questions? It's a good sign of a good speaker when they ask questions. Yes, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. personally say thank you to, uh, to the sheriff. I'm very impressive to see the, the quality measures that have been implemented in our local law enforcement. In marketing, I'm a big believer, perception is reality. So the, the, the measures of professionalism you've brought to our, our law enforcement agency can't help make us a safer community. So we appreciate that very much. Thank you again. <laughs> um, we also want to draw